Joining me now is Andy Mitten, a man of many guises. Andy, you're a sports journalist and uh, run the United We Stand fanzine. Let's first of all just get your, your thoughts on that game, Manchester United against Liverpool. Can we talk about something different? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, I mean, Liverpool have beaten us the last three times now and beating United well, and I'm probably as frustrated as every United fan. Go to uh, Liverpool away and lose against a team who's lost their previous four games. Big improvement is needed, but I think Sir Alex Ferguson knows that more than anyone else. I'm confident United can bounce back quite quickly. OK, we'll maybe chat a little bit more about contemporary United in, in just a moment. But, uh, Andy, you're promoting a new book, Glory, Glory. Let me just hold it up. Uh, glory, Glory, Man United, the players, uh, Man United in the 1990s, the players' stories. Uh, there you go. I think that's your, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's your second book. You did one in the 80s, which was yeah. very successful. You, you've probably done different things in your guys as a journalist, but yeah. it's going all right, this book. I think there's plenty of decent stories in there. Yeah, there's 11 chapters in there, each of them dedicated to one person. So there's 10 players, including uh, players like Eric Cantona, Jesper Blomquist, Nicky Bort, Andy Cole, uh, David May, and the former chairman, Martin Edwards. Yeah, um, now, Martin Edwards, they, some of the papers picked up on some of the quotes yeah. from the book, as they do these days, yeah. uh, but he was very open with you, would, would you say? He was good enough to... He doesn't do a lot of interviews at all, and he invited me to his house. I sat with him for three or four hours. He said, you can have as much time as you want. He gave his fee to charity. And I said, you're not going to like all the, the questions that I've got for you because I've got to do my job properly and you weren't always a popular chairman at Manchester United. And he said, I'll deal with anything. And he gave me a very honest and open interview and an interesting insight into his life. And he put his side of the story across and we didn't always agree. Mm -hmm. And we seldom agreed on some points. But uh, it, it was good. It was, it was good value. And, and some of the players had completely different stories. I mean, I spent three days in Stockholm with Jesper Blomquist. It's um, a nice little gig for you. Yeah, it was great. I mean, you get a real insight into somebody's life because people think you're a footballer for Manchester United, life must be wonderful, but it isn't because these people have heartbreak and private lives and financial problems and injuries which all have a bearing on their life. So there's ten different, very different stories. Um, Give us a standout one, a, a humorous one. I imagine the, David May is going to be involved in here somewhere. Well, you've picked the right one. <laughs> David May is uh, getting a great feedback for that because he's such a lad and a character and you can see why he was so popular in the dressing room at Old Trafford. And people like, like Cantona or, or Geordie Cruyff would say David May was an absolute swine because... The things he'd do to me, you know, he, the tricks he'd do to me, he'd cut the ends out of the socks and stuff like that. Geordie Cruyff used to walk in, he didn't like being in Manchester, he didn't like playing for United, he admits now that he was too immature to, to, to play. And David May just he, he used to say to him every morning, good morning, you... Uh, he, uh, he would use a profanity. And then he would say, um, dos San Miguel's. Um, and Geordie, who's a very bright, complicated, intelligent lad... Ten years after he, he played, he can come clean and say, you know, this, this, this is why it didn't work out for me at Old Trafford. I drove to Marseille to interview Eric Cantona, always an interesting Good person. Uh, Paul Parker was, was fascinating. And what I try and do is not present them as one-dimensional footballers, but as real people. Well, that's the beauty of it. And I think it's safe to say some of the reviews, the feedback that's coming back, is that's the beauty of this book, is that it's, it's very real. You just, a lot of the autobiographies these days, let's face it, it's very bland. It's nice to see. Now they're away from it all, they're taking a step away from it. That's when it's best to do these things, isn't yeah. it? When they can actually do it without running into disrepute charges, etc. And just be honest, because there's some great characters. We don't yeah. want these, these people who have no personalities, do no. we? Uh, Andrew Cole is a good example. When he played, he had a reputation for being surly, for being one-dimensional, for being awkward. I wasn't even going to interview him for the book, and I'm glad that I did, because I spent four hours with him. And he gave me one of the best interviews I've ever done. And you get a real... He told me about his dad being in the minor strike, about racism when he grew up in, in Nottingham, about the, his family history. And you think, gosh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that side of you. And quite often, they give these bland interviews when they're playing. But when they retire, they seem to grow up overnight. OK, Andy and uh, Andrew will be joining Andy. Uh, for a few signings this week, aren't you? The book is going to be uh, what available. Is it Trafford Tent? You've got a couple yeah, of Yeah, first we're doing two signings. Waterstones in the, in the Manchester Arndale at one o'clock and WH Smith in the Trafford Centre at five o'clock this Thursday. OK, I wish you well with it. It's a, it's, a, it's a fantastic effort for you as well. It must be great to see it in that guise as well. Excellent stuff.